Hi everyone, I thought I'd do a little video to go through Helen Elliston's very first book, Colorist Special Effects. Now I actually like quite a lot of the things from this first book, even though I've got all of her books and I sort of turn back to it. Now what she's done in this book is it starts quite basic, which I think is really useful. So right at the beginning it talks about shading and how to do different types of techniques when you're colouring, so zigzags or coils or feathering or scumbling. So and you can practice these different techniques to have a, to work out how to shade things. And I think that's really great for beginners. A lot of people just jump right in and don't think about where you're going to start. And this one talks about how to blend one colour into another when you're blending. This is really useful when we've got sort of red into orange or different, or even sort of four different colours to blend together. And then we move on to how to do three dimensions by using different pressure on the pencil, where to put the highlights and the shadows and things like that. So you get some ideas of what sort of things to do when you're, when you're colouring different shapes. And here we start with eyes. Now, Eyes I always find are quite difficult, but I know a lot of people really love to do them. And so you've got a step-by-step sort of -step guide on how to do the eye, and then you've got a little bit on how to do a tear as well on the cheek, and I and um, how to make them glisten as well. And they look really great, so those are quite fun to do. And here we've got lips, so it teaches you how to layer up different um, the different colours so that you get the shiny part and the darker parts and there's a little place for you to have a go. And here we have glasses which is really interesting so you can try different techniques to make the lenses shine or reflect things. And here we have some skin tone so different parts um, steps to adding different colours on and then um, forming the sort of final skin tone after once you get to here. Now what's interesting in this book is it's not a specific brand of pencil so it says things like use an earthy green or a yellow green or a or a sort of pale flesh or a dark grey so you can use any set of pencils and just um, work out what to use what I would recommend is look through all the instructions first pick out all the pencils you're going to use even perhaps write them down in the instructions so that you don't get muddled as you go through and you can practice them here and then hair. Hair can be quite tricky to get the shine and the shadow and this shows you exactly how to do it. And then we have a blue hair which is really interesting. Obviously you could use these instructions and just do any colour you like. It shows a, a, a different colour here so you can just, just adapt it and then you can have a practice here. And then we have um, nature type things. We've got some running and water drops. I've used this one not for a running water drop but more for a for a shape like this and it was very effective. I was really pleased with it. And here we have bubbles. Bubbles is something that lots of people like to know how to do and these are different to the bubbles in some of her other books so uh, they're great fun. And we have a shimmery butterfly. I've tried this one too. He looks fantastic when you finish with him. And this red rose. I haven't tried this one out. It looks quite fun. And a flower shows you how to do the middle of a flower as a gemstone or um, just as a, a, as a more realistic looking flower centre. I've actually tried this one with the gemstone. And then we have clouds. I've had a go at these clouds and actually I was really surprised at how well they came out considering how badly I think I draw clouds. So it was quite fun. And here we have a glossy mushroom. I've had a go at this one as well. He's quite fun. What have we got here? A soap bubble. So how to put a sort of shiny bubble over the top of what you're doing or a floating soap bubble. And this one is mermaid scales and I've had a good I've had a go at these and they're great fun. Um, it's just quite a lot of different colours all mixed together and you get a lovely effect. And fur. Now fur is something that people find tricky so it's great to have a page on fur to have a go at and some translucent fairy wings. It's a really good idea. You could use this maybe for dragonflies as well or things or bees or anything just to use the technique to sort of have them looking really sparkly but see-through and you can practice on this page here. And then we have three-dimensional bows. These are particularly great for Christmas books and things like that so you can have a go at working out exactly where to put the light and shade to get it looking really good. And we have a wine glass, so we start to learn how to do glass, which is quite usually very tricky. So this is a great one to do. 
and balloons. I've used this one. I don't think I was doing a balloon. I just wanted something to look like a balloon. And it's really effective with this sort of light area here. And then we've got a dress. So how to do this little dress. And you've got a picture that brings together all the things that you can practice on. Now this crown I have done and I've used this technique for lots of different sort of metallic things and it's really, really good. I highly recommend this one. It's fantastic. You get great, great looking results. And now a glowing candle. I've tried this one too and this was fun and it, I was impressed with that. And we've got a practice area. A glowing lantern. I haven't tried this one. I think I used the candle um, one rather than the sort of lantern one, but I should have a go at that because it looks great. And chrome. Now, so you've got shiny chrome. I've used um, I've used this for something. I can't remember what, but it looked really great. I particularly like this flower. It's fantastic. And these glass look teardrops. I use these a lot when I'm doing things like fish scales or. Um, something that I just want to look gem like I use this technique it's really works really well everything looks really shiny and really good but here we go on to the proper gems and I've used these a lot as well and they are very impressive so you get a lovely gem which is shining with little lines through it looks fantastic I've done this one and this one and I've used this one a lot the red one and I've even tried this. Now these glinting crystals, they're fantastic. You've got different shades of colour and different things. I really like those. I've used those a few times. And then there's the red ruby. Not sure if I've done that one, but I've done this, um, this one where I had a black, um, I did a black gemstone and it looked really effective. And here we have a sort of a bug done as a sort of gem. I haven't done it on a bug, but I've done it on a fish. And I really liked having sort of gem, glassy gem fish. And there's another one here in different colour. And here's the fish. So I use this one for the fish. And this is a silvery pearl. Looks really lovely. I haven't tried it, but it looks fantastic. And here you've got an amber gem. So you've got a slightly different colour one and a black. I've had a go at this black one as well and done this sort of bit around the edge too and I was really pleased with how that came out. And the galactic looking gem, I haven't tried this one but it does look good. And we've got some practice gem pages and here we've got some backgrounds and embellishments. So this one talks is how to do snowfall so that could be really useful for your Christmas books. And here's a stained glass window effect, which is really interesting. I haven't tried it, but I think it's a really interesting technique to make something look really different. And this shows you how to make things look less flat. So although it uses the example of this planet, you can use the techniques to for anything, really. And here we've got a sunset background, which is really pretty. So you could follow that through. It's quite, she shows it within a square thing, but a lot of, um, a lot of, Colouring books have circular designs, um, rather like this one that I'm doing here, so it could go in the middle of there. And then we have how to create water backgrounds, or sort of a different pastel effects in the background. And here's a sort of more, another water technique. And here is a sort of starry background, so that's great. And a sort of bright galactic star in the background, so that could be quite impressive. Again, maybe Christmassy, not sure, depends what you're colouring. And here's how to do this sort of fairy dust trail, which would be great not just for sort of fairy books, there are quite a lot out there, but also maybe for insects or things like that. And this teaches you how to do wood grain using a really interesting technique. And this one teaches you how to do like paint drips coming out from the bottom of your picture, which I think is quite fun. And this one teaches you how to do rubbing so you get different effects behind what you're doing. And then how to create a shadow underneath what you're, um, you're doing. And moon and stars background. And how to do a marker pen background using some hand sanitizer. We've all got quite a lot of that around at the moment so we might want to have a go at that one. And fireworks. Now you might think they're easy, but uh, and actually, when you look through the um, through the instructions, they're not too bad. But I think you want to follow it to get it right because these look quite three D. And now you've got some practice pages. There's also a, um, a color wheel here to give you some help with um, blending. And this is so that you can test some different colors on these particular pictures. 
and you've got some signature cards. So what these are is you put your name here, you colour in this thing and then when you take a photograph of your artwork and you put it onto social media you can put the card on it so that people don't um, try and steal it or copy it. And then there's a colour chart so you can swatch your pencils in the back and uh, have a look at all the colours. And there's lots of pages for those because a lot of us have lots and lots of pencils. I'm sure I'm not the only one that has multiple sets of different pencils. And I think that goes all the way through to the end. So there you go. Hopefully you found that interesting and you might want to uh, get hold of this book. As usual, I'll leave a link to it in the description so you can go and have a look at it for yourself. Thank you.